Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be putting together a Raspberry Pi CM4 powered Game Boy. Now, this is all thanks to Retro Game Restore and their new GPI Mate Plus for the CM4. Basically, what this is is a cartridge module that allows you to install a CM4 in your GPI case. They were kind enough to send one over for a video, and they also included some of their clear cases uh, because the one that has the module installed in it is kind of a smoked case. I personally like this one and I'll be using it. Along with the cartridge itself, they do include a few stickers here, but remember, you can always print your own if you want your own custom logo on it, or if you just want a certain game character, you can always do that. But the GPI Mate Plus is actually pretty cool. Now they offered one that you could actually install a CM3 module inside of one of these and use it in your GPI case, but they've now upgraded it to the Plus module so we can use that new CM4. And basically, when this is all said and done, I'll have a Raspberry Pi 4 powered GPI case. 4 gigs of RAM and that BCM2711 CPU. Same exact thing that's in the Raspberry Pi 4. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at the module, I'll do a quick assembly, and then we'll get right into some gameplay. I'm actually gonna be running RetroPie on this unit here. But all the magic actually happens inside of this little cart here with their new custom PCB. If I can get it out of here without damaging it. This does have two micro USB ports on it and a micro SD card slot. I'll just go ahead and give you a closer look at this thing. Now, if you do end up ordering one of these GPI Mate Pluses, remember it doesn't come with a CM4, so you will have to add your own. And I'm actually going to be adding a new Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, 4 gigabyte model with Wi Fi and Bluetooth built in. So, since this goes in the GPI case, I figured I'd go ahead and pick up a fresh one here. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is an awesome little Raspberry Pi Zero powered handheld by Retroflag. You can pick them up on Amazon. I think they're around $59. And even with the Pi Zero in it, it's an awesome little unit. We got a D-pad, four face buttons, start select, two triggers around back, and a 3.5 inch IPS display. And this is actually meant to be powered by a Raspberry Pi Zero with the included cart. So you will have to add your own Zero to this. But we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this from the Zero to a CM4. Now it's really easy to get this assembled and set up. They do offer a full tutorial on the software over on the website. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And obviously what you're going to need here is the GPI case, the Retro Game Restore GPI Mate Plus for the CM4, and the CM4 module. And basically we're just going to grab this new Mate Plus and attach the CM4 right here with the new high density connector that's on the CM4. Just going to line it up, press it down, make sure it's connected, and the CM4 is now installed in the Mate Plus. And it sits in here really nicely. And like I mentioned, up top here we do have a micro SD card slot. We can access this without having to disassemble the unit. And if we take a close look at this side, we have another micro USB port. But yeah, I think the developers and hardware designers over at Retro Game Restore have done an amazing job with this unit. Now that we have the CM4 installed, it's just time to snap this case together. We also have two screws that need to go in one side of it just to hold everything together. And once we have those in, we can actually install this in the GPI case. And since the CM4 is going to be pulling more power than a Raspberry Pi Zero would, I would definitely recommend using rechargeable batteries. I mean, when I first did my review of the GPI case in a stock form, I mentioned go ahead and use rechargeable batteries, or you could do a battery mod and add a LiPo. Just got these two screws to go in this side here. One's a little shorter than the other one, so make sure you put them in the correct location. We're good to go with the assembly. This thing went together really nicely. If you want to add those decals or print some custom stickers, you can always do that, but I'm going to leave it just like this. And when it comes to the software installation, just head right over to their website. You can get to their GitHub page from here. Full tutorial on how to get this up and running. Basically, you're going to use the stock RetroPie image you're going to go with the Raspberry Pi 4, Pi 400 version, and then follow the instructions here. It's actually pretty simple to do. And once you're done with this, everything will be rotated correctly. You'll have the screen, sound, and all the buttons will be working. So I've already got my software installed on a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, and it's ready to go. This is a fresh GPI case, so I'll pull that off. We'll throw the SD card in here. And by the way, I'm using 2000 milliamp hour Energizer rechargeable batteries in this unit. Okay, so I got all the software installed. Like I showed you, they do have a tutorial over on GitHub. This is RetroPie. I've installed a few themes here. I do have Wi-Fi activated on the CM4 module here because this is one with Wi-Fi built in. 
As you can see, you will get box art and video snaps. The theme I'm using here is actually the GBZ theme that you can get through the theme downloader. And basically what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 4 powered Game Boy. Now we're missing a lot of buttons that will work with the higher end emulators, but we have enough power to run those higher end emulators like Dreamcast, PSP, PlayStation 1, and that's really what I want to jump into. So first up, we'll go with a little bit of Dreamcast. I'm using the Flycast Core, and we'll just test out Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now I'm just going to go ahead and skip right into some gameplay here, because it does take a while to get into it. But I mean, yeah, even with Flycast, Dreamcast does run pretty well on this chipset, the CM4 or the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see here, this is at full speed. It's working really well, especially with that lowered resolution of this built-in screen here. And like I mentioned, unfortunately, the GPI case just doesn't have an analog stick built in, but we have that D-pad, start, select, four action buttons, and we also have L and R around back. So if you want to play the awesome fighting games that were released for Dreamcast, you can always do that. Next up, we got some PlayStation 1, Bloody Roar 2, one of the harder ones to run, and you can definitely get by with a lot of PlayStation games and this button layout here. Keep in mind, not a lot of PlayStation 1 games utilize the dual shock with the analog stick, so a ton of these games will be fully playable with the button layout we have on the GPI case, and it runs perfectly fine. And the final thing I wanted to test here was PSP. We have Soul Calibur Destiny running at full speed. It actually runs really great. Now when it comes down to it, if you want to do God of War on the Raspberry Pi 4 or the CM4, you're still going to get some lag, but there are a lot of games that are playable on the CM4 module. So overall, I do think this is a cool little project, but you know, we are missing a lot of buttons on the GPI case. I really wish we had a bigger screen and adding a CM4 to this little thing here really doesn't make that much sense given we don't have those extra buttons. Now that 3.5 inch screen, I can definitely get used to, but right now the Raspberry Pi CM4 handheld department is really lacking and this is just something to get you going. But yeah, this does work in the GPI case and there are a lot of fighting games that can be run in Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, and PSP that only use the buttons we have here. It would definitely make a lot more sense if the GPI case had at least an analog stick built in, but unfortunately we just have that D-pad, four face buttons, start select, L and R. But in the end, it's really up to you. If you're interested in learning more about the GPI Mate Plus or maybe pre-ordering it, I will leave a link in the description. I'll also leave links for everything else I used in this video from the GPI case to the batteries. All that stuff can be gotten on Amazon pretty easily. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the GPI case with the CM4 installed, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.